Ready? Are you recording? <laughs> yep. Are they? Are they all red? I can't see shit. Hey, what's up there, Bat fans out there? Troy to the Max Extreme here. And I'm Ghost Hunter Dave. <laughs> Today, we're starting it off with a little bit of Bat Year sprinkled with a bit of Miller time with... Batman. Oh, wait, did we say it's Imperious Rex yet? No. Fuck. Together, we are Imperious Rex. We're doing Batman Year One. Got a little itch on my shoulder. <laughs> so stick in, stay tuned, and enjoy the Bat Year. Now you want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. So as we start out, Frank. Hold on. Oh, oh God! Little, I want this little bow knot. So get it, fix it. What do you want? I just want it tucked in. I don't want your shoelace <laughs> looking. Just tuck it in. <laughs> tuck it in the shirt. Yeah, yeah. Tuck it in there. You good? Yeah. So as we start out our bat ear run, we are going to start. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Off to a great start. <laughs> As we start off our bat year run, we're going to start it right with a little Frank Miller. Oh, going a trip back, back to Miller time. Going back to the well, and we are starting off with Batman Year One. As the title indicates, mm -hmm. it tells the story of Batman and Gordon's first meeting mm -hmm. um, as they both set out on a course to clean up Gotham City. Mm -hmm. A city that just loves being dirty. <laughs> 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 this was brought to us... <laughs> By Frank Miller and Dave Mazzucchelli yep. in Year of Our Lord, 1986. Yeah. What a time to be alive. Or to be born. That's right. <laughs> and this also um, was in Batman issues 404 to 407. Oh, it I was guess right I on in the main Batman title. Oh. So as this was coming out, because it came out in 86, there's a lot of shit also going on in 1986 at DC specifically. Yeah. Because we had also Crisis on Infinite Earths coming out. Yep. Swamp Thing was coming out at the same time. Watchmen was coming yeah. out at the same time. All this big, huge shit happening at just DC. Was Dark Knight all... Returns, too? And Dark Knight Returns, yeah. yeah. So... By Frank Miller. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, all of this seminal shit wow. was coming out at the exact same time. That must be how we both were born in 86. <laughs> we just guess. congealed <laughs> in our mother's wombs yeah. because yeah. there were so many outside <laughs> right. great comic forces going on yeah. that it just just sparked like virgin births. <laughs> so I love how this book is primarily through Gordon's eyes. Yeah. Like it's mm -hmm. it's a Gordon book first and a Batman book second, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah. And they both kind of trade off on narrating it. Bruce kicks a tree in half. Oh boy, does he? <laughs> <laughs> I love Okay, so this one this book really is kind of set in like a realistic Type setting. There's no real fantasy elements to it. No. Even like, I would say it's the most realistic thing Miller has ever written. Oh, oh by yeah. Far. Oh yeah. But then you go ahead and kick a tree in half, <laughs> and you're like, man, this book is so real. He must be way fucking strong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he kind of retells the story of Batman's origins mm -hmm. too, where he starts out as he's trying to kind of figure out his persona, what yeah. he's gonna do to clean up the town. Yeah. Goes out on a couple missions. Yep. And doesn't do them very well, really. No, no, no. Um, and it, after one, he's uh, back retired to the manor, and he's mm -hmm. bleeding out because mm -hmm. he took some injury. <laughs> yeah. And he's sitting there, and he's deciding, like, do I ring the bell and have Alfred come patch me up and mm -hmm. carry on with my mission, mm -hmm. or do I just die here? Yeah. He's like, what should I do? And he's looking at this bust of his father mm -hmm. um, in the mansion there. Mm -hmm. He's like, Father, send me a sign. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, this bat smashes through the window right. and rests on his father's head. <laughs> right. And he's like, okay, 
I'll be a bat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then dings the bell. That's how the issue ends. Uh -huh. And that is great. Yeah. You know, that is, that's something that we've seen a lot since then. But I don't mm -hmm. know if it was ever canon before Frank Miller did that in this, right? I don't think so. And it's perfect. Well, but don't they kind of do it back in, like, Detective number 27, like, way back? Or does he just decide in his armchair, like... I shall become a bat. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> that sounds more like it, what it probably was. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, Maybe because I'm just probably bleeding it all into some other yeah. continuity or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Regardless, the way he sets that yeah, scene real up good. is so good. Yeah, real good. Yep, and from then on, it's Batman all the way. Mm -hmm. So much so that in the next, uh, I think the next issue, it kicks off with him stopping like some thieves on a fire escape as they're looting. Oh, a, yeah. And it just goes terribly. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's still, he doesn't quite have it down yet. And it's such a good, like how it plays out, it feels mm -hmm. so real. Like he's, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. socking a couple of them and one of them starts to fall off and he's like, oh shit, no, no, that's not what I'm about. And he grabs him and he's holding him over the edge of the building. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, the other thugs are like, get him. And they're just like kicking him. <laughs> kicking him in the back. Yeah. yeah. And then eventually yeah. he like knocks them out, pulls the guy up and then like slumps down. He's like, whew, shit. I need to rethink this. <laughs> this sucks. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I do like all, the whole the whole book is just added also by Mazzucchelli's like realistic, simple line work too. Yeah. And it's just like it gives it just that right gritty tone that complements Frank Miller's words that I don't think another artist does as well. No, I would say it's the best pairing of anybody with Frank Miller. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I read this years and years ago and wasn't all that impressed by it mm -hmm. and then read it again here and it... I was like, this is my favorite Batman story I've ever read. I don't know what, I don't know what changed, but like, I, I had this whole new appreciation for it. The art is fantastic. Mm -hmm. It reminds me a bit of uh, Chris Samney. Yeah, a now. little bit. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's amazing how much Batman Begins takes from this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't think I caught it all at the be when I first read it, but mm -hmm. like, lines are from it. The mm -hmm. ending is right out of it. And mm -hmm. there's a couple other spots that are just completely pulled from it. This was actually the first time I actually sat down and actually read it, too. Yeah. Because I've, I've known all about it and the whole thing is just, like, I knew the whole, all the story beats right. or whatever, just growing up with comics around. And I've seen the animated movie. But yeah, I really, I really enjoyed this book a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot what it does with the characters. Are you a fan, though, of what they do with Gordon in this? Making him kind of a scumbag at times? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, Gordon always struck me as someone that was, like, a little flawed. Like, mm -hmm. you don't know what his personal life is, mm -hmm. but if he's that dedicated to the job, mm -hmm. he can't be carrying on that much of, like, a romantic <laughs> relationship with <laughs> right. his wife. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, in this, he uh, kind of has an affair with this other girl on the force, uh, Sarah. Yeah. I think. Let's call her Sarah now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, but as Frank Miller goes on in other Bat stories... He writes Gordon's wife, Barbara, is just like a lush. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe because Gordon doesn't pay any attention to her, but she's just like a drunk. Mm -hmm. And you kind of feel bad for him. He's in the spot where he wants to like do her well, but mm -hmm. he also, the heart wants what it wants, I guess. And yeah. he's started to find this like relationship with his uh, other coworker. Mm -hmm. And as far as I can tell, they don't do that outside of Miller's work either. Mm -mm. I don't think they touch on it at all. Even but it though... does make an appearance in, like, every book Miller writes after <laughs> yeah, that. They it reference does. it. Yeah. Because <laughs> even, like, ones that we think are, like, kind of loosely connected, they bring in something like that. It's like, no, this is directly tied back yeah. to year one. Yep. Almost to a fault, <laughs> as we'll get into later. <laughs> yeah. So Gordon's narration through this is one of, like, the driving forces of the book. And mm -hmm. it has some of the best Frank Miller lines mm -hmm. in this. One of them uh, is when he's on the firing range and he's, mm -hmm. you know, shooting target practice mm -hmm. and everything. And he's saying so much like, I hate, I hate doing this. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, another kick, boom. I hate the gun. I hate my job. Mm -hmm. I keep practicing. Mm -hmm. You know, like he <laughs> hates it, but he has to do it. Yeah. Kind of like Batman. Yeah. And then they do this great panel transition where it goes from another kick and then it cuts to his pregnant wife and he's feeling her belly and it says another kick. Mm-hmm. So oh, good. yeah, that was really good. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. great storytelling. Mm -hmm. uh, that also has, like, a really memorable moment, too, with the one where Batman blows up the wall and comes and sits uh, on their dinner table of the all crime these... crime family. Yeah, yeah. All, all these uh, uh, shit bags or whatever. It's yeah. like the whole You Have Eaten Well speech. That... Yep. That scene is amazing, too. Mm -hmm. That is, like, one of the best Batman mm -hmm. speeches. Yeah. And, again, Mazzucchelli draws it 
perfectly, mm -hmm. you know, as he sh puts the dinner, uh, <laughs> the, what would you call oh. it, flambe out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he puts out the whole thing. Yeah, it cuts the light it. out, mm -hmm. you know. So some other high points in this is Batman's warehouse escape when the police mm -hmm. are after oh, him. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's fantastic. Yep. It's almost like a full issue mm -hmm. of him just... Like, he has nothing on him other than his belt and a couple things, mm -hmm. like some blow darts. And he's <laughs> yeah. sitting in there. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he uses that, like, sonic um, device that makes all the bats swarm in. Yeah. Fantastic. They that. pick that right up in the movie. Mm -hmm. What did you think of Selena and Holly? Um... <laughs> Selena! Yeah. Holly is awful. Fucking annoying. And like, I was trying to read it, how it was emphasizing uh -huh. the balloons, and I'm like, that stinks. Huh? She's gotta Let's be the, like, go. <laughs> she's gotta be the most annoying <laughs> bitch to be around. Yeah. Otherwise, I didn't mind Selena so much. I liked her. And I kind of like how... She, Batman inspires her to take up yeah, Catwoman. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And then as it ends, he kind of inspires the Joker to mm -hmm. make an appearance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, I mean, that's one thing that's right, uh, or the Batman Begins pulls from, is right. like, theatricality right. inspires other mm -hmm. people, for yeah. better or for worse. Even the ending of this is the ending to Batman Begins, where yeah. he's poisoned the reservoir yep. or whatever. Joker loves that reservoir, <laughs> my <laughs> god. He his dirty mitts out of there. <laughs> <laughs> he's always trying to go up there and dump shit in there. <laughs> god. As it goes on, you know, Gordon's conscience is constantly playing a role as he doesn't know, like, is Batman really someone I should be going after? Because mm -hmm. everyone on the force wants Batman caught. Yeah. And Gordon oh, kind of realizes, one. yeah, like, oh, man, he's he seems to be doing good. Like, he saved this cat. He saved this old woman. <laughs> yeah. And right. he's like, yeah, I think he says, he constantly says, like, the metal in my hand is heavier than ever. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the gun. Yeah. Just, it's his, his mm -hmm. weight on his soul. Yeah. So that's good. Plus, he's got the affair going on. He's, mm -hmm. he's in turmoil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of my favorite things, it's Flash that he kicks the shit out of, right? Mm -hmm. That's his name. I love that whole scene, how he beats the shit out of him and ever leaves him naked in the woods or whatever. Yeah. And then they're like... He Gordon wouldn't... is a badass in this. He's like <laughs> yeah. an ex-Navy SEAL, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I never would have gathered from like Gordon in any other iteration. <laughs> no, but I really like that touch. And then he's like, Flash was too cocky. He would never bring this up. He would never admit mm -hmm. that he got beat up by an old guy like me or whatever. Yeah, yep. One of the best Batman lines in this is when Batman's, like, interrogating a drug lord. He says, bullets don't harm me. Nothing harms me. But I know pain. Sometimes I share it with someone like you. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that like that doesn't even seem like it came from Frank Miller. That's no. too good. <laughs> Considering, like, a lot of what comes later. Like, that is so good. Yeah. Classic yeah. Batman. Classic Dealing Batman. out pain. Mm -hmm. um, Gordon's got a kid, James Jr. Yep. Who, uh rears his ugly head later in Snyder's run mm -hmm. yep. on Batman, yep. which is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, Gordon's kids is like a weird thing that nobody, I think, re like just kind of like, in here it seems like he only has James Jr. Yeah. But then later on, he has, Barbara. he has Barbara who's 16, and they talk about James Jr. being like 8 or whatever, yeah. how old he is. The timeline of his kids is all over the place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think they've ever definitively nailed it down. No. So, I don't know. It's weird. But anyway, go on. Um, I was also going to say, as we're wrapping up, the ending of this, mm -hmm. really good. Yeah. On the bridge. Uh -huh. Like, I was... My heart was in my me throat Me there. too. <laughs> With just, like, recently having a uh, little girl, it's just like, oh, shit, they got a fucking innocent baby. Yeah. Like, it, it, I totally read it different now. Oh, yeah. So. When I first read it, I was like, I don't like that he's not Batman at the end, uh -huh. you know, because he's just Bruce Wayne on the motorcycle, mm -hmm. and Gordon gets his glasses knocked off, mm -hmm. so he knows it's Batman, but he says, like, I'm practically blind without my glasses. Mm -hmm. You better get out of here. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, that showdown on the bridge where the... Um, it's kind of like in Dark Knight where they got Gordon's kid that, oh, and Batman has yeah. to like knock him off yeah. and save the kid. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that part is fantastic. Really good. And as they all go over the bridge, you're just like, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, and yeah. Batman comes out, hands him the baby and mm -hmm. then takes off. And from that point on, Gordon and Batman are like, yeah, kinship. Yeah. So you're one. Excellent. Masterpiece. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Really good. Yeah. Well paced, well drawn, well written. It, everything about it is great. So, I mean, where do we go from there? Well, I can I can tell you where we can go. Oh, oh what? What's it? Oh. Hold on. Got yeah, Paul coming in on the red phone here. Red phone here. Yes. Yes, hello? Yeah? Huh? Okay. Hey. 
You want to hear what this guy has to say? Yeah, let's put him on. <laughs> hey, homies, what's up? Ryan Wynn here with a special little video for my friends at Imperious Rex. They're doing a Batman spotlight for the rest of the year, and they've asked me what my favorite Batman yarn is. Now, I've been around for a while, and I've read a lot of Batman books. But I gotta say, my favorite out of all of them has been Batman Incorporated by Grant Morrison and Chris Burnham. I like it so much I own this original page by Chris. It shows a pivotal moment in the relationship between Ra's al Ghul and Talia. Then all of this, of course, leads to the Damian Wayne storyline, which I think is one of the most powerful Batman stories ever. I don't want to give anything away about it. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. If you have read it, I recommend going back and reading it again. I also highly recommend sticking around for the rest of the year and seeing what Imperious Rex has in store for us with their Batman Spotlight. And then after you've watched their videos, you can head on over to my channel, just Ryan Wynn on YouTube. I got a lot of fun videos too. Alright, thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, take it easy. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for calling in, man. <laughs> and you guys at home, call in. Call in on the bat phone. The lines are open. That's right. <laughs> You're accepting calls. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, mm -hmm. after that, that unexpected break there. Yeah. We can it seems put, like a good... <laughs> we can put year one away. Yes. Great book. Yep. Check it out sometime. That's right. So, uh, Troy, what's, what's with the wardrobe? I thought we were uh, batting it up. Oh, you see, Dave... I'm buying this YouTube, and I'm making more rules about the dress code. Batman Begins. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Joke I made. So does that wind us down for our first, our inaugural episode in the Bat Year? I think it should. All right. <laughs> so, um, since it is a special occasion, yeah, um, we are going to do another one this very week. This oh, week? This week. It's weekend. I don't know how you want to factor that in, <laughs> but this Saturday, the uh, 15th of September, is National Batman Day. Whew. So we're going to be dropping our follow-up episode, more Miller time, uh, <laughs> more craziness, a lot more craziness, <laughs> oh, as we tackle all-star Batman and Robin, the boy wonder. Mm -hmm. So tune in for a special Saturday episode <laughs> of Imperious Rex, hashtag Bat Year, <laughs> hashtag Miller time. <laughs> <laughs> but until then, Troy. Yeah, I've been Troy to the Max Extreme. And I've been Ghost Hunter Dave. And this has been Imperious Rex. See you Saturday. <laughs>